Welcome back. This is part 2 of What if Issei was a half dragon hybrid? I won't drag this intro out any longer. So let's begin. Chapter 3 Kaneko watched those weird brothers with her usual expressionless expression while munching on sweets. One was her senior, Issei, widely known at school as a perverted beast. She noticed that during the whole show, he shifted his gaze between herself, Rias and Akino. Standing right beside him, was Septimus, the boy with unusual hair who transferred recently and was the topic of many gossips. From what she's seen so far, he was skilled in magic and most likely as perverted as his brother. And me, Hiodo Septimus, something just as rare. A male Nekomata, Nekosho. Hearing his words, she stopped with another candy midair. He's a Nekosho too. His black tail and ear reminded her of her sister and her betrayal, and how Kaneko was almost executed. A flood of unwanted memories made short girl panic. Oni-sama, why? Well, looking at you it's actually not that great a feat when we have here another Nekomata and a fallen angel hybrid, daughter of the Kadri member nonetheless. For a second, the world around her stopped. The white-haired girl couldn't form any thought, the words echoing deep inside her mind. Unconsciously dropping her candy, she stared with a look of pure terror at both Hiodos, unable to move. Crack, sitting next to her, Akino dropped her cup, looking like she was about to panic herself. The sharp sound of broken vessel pierced their ears, hardly waking youngest girl. No, her loud scream echoed inside the room, while she tightly hugged her petrified neighbor, trying to hide and shut herself out from everyone. Okay, that's not something that I've expected. Do you know what's going on here? Septimus clearly didn't know what was happening and how his words could cause such a reaction. Both dragon spirits stayed silent, as they understood the situation even less than him. No idea, but it looks serious, I think that accidentally you said something you really shouldn't. Answered Issei while folding his wings. Anyo, it was all that Septimus managed to say. After his declaration and offhandedly dropped comment, the rest of the room sat stunned. Rias was the first one that came back to her senses. Seeing Septimus moving in their direction, the devil princess quickly acted. Yudo, her sharp command immediately brought the knight back. Faster than the human eye could register, he shot from his position, conjuring two demonic swords and directing them to the black-haired teen's throat. Halting with his foot in the air Yukai focused his eyes on the two black pieces of steel pointing at him. It's getting worse with every second. What have I done to make them try to kill me? He screamed internally. I have no idea, but you two can most likely take them. They have potential, but are young and untrained. Diedrag answered seriously, and set a new world record in becoming strays. No thank you, and do I have to remind you that a few hours ago we actually died. So let's avoid making it 2 times 24 hours and don't do anything stupid. Issei tried to calm them down and stop it from escalating further. Can someone please tell me why I suddenly have two swords at my throat? Septimus asked with his ears down, keeping his calm and watching out to not cut himself by the blades. Kiba stayed silent, waiting for the next order. Meanwhile, Rias, Sona, and Tsubaki stood up, their hands holding balls of demonic energy, ready to throw at any hostile movement. This is what happens when you suddenly claim that you're mad from power next to the grandson of two beings that could kill gods and scare my peerage into a coma. The cold voice of the Grimori heiress cut through the tension. I'm not psychotic because of power. And while we can't argue about Issei being the grandson of both heavenly dragons, no one tried to scare your servants. He shot back, making Kiba move his swords closer. Whoa, easy there, Blondie, I'm calm. I'm calm. Devils have a bad history with Senjutsu users that killed their masters while drunk on power, so let me be a judge here. Now, explain your story and how you knew who Akino and Kaneko Chan are. Now, Rhea still aimed her power of destruction at them and watched for any signs of lies. Drunk on power, what, without stories and sidetracking, make it no more than 50 words. Sona stopped him before could say any more. Quote dot dot dot, what? Septimus repeated, 49 now, stated Citri without even blinking. You better tell them, before they attack us because of how annoying you are. Even with literal swords pointing at you, you can't stop yourself from being dramatic. Said tired Issei, keeping an eye on everyone in the room. 
Thinking for a minute and counting on his fingers, the male Nekomata did exactly as he was told to. Guy in the story is Azazel, we spent part of our childhood in Grigori, so we know Barakil, he talked sometimes about his daughter. Don't jump the gun, we're not in this whole war and your siblings know about us in the city. And I smelled cat on Kaneko-chan. Done, he declared in one breath, maintaining eye contact with the swordsman. Rhea's tolerance for confusion reached its limit with the last revelations. Now she only listened with a straight face as the teen declared that he was in a fairly close relationship with the fallen angels and their leader, with his brother facepalming loudly. Care to elaborate, before we kill you for being fallen angel agents? Before situation got out of control Issei stepped between them. Change of plan, shut the fuck up. Issei quickly silenced his brother before he made the situation even worse. Rias Senpei, it's not what it sounds like. Yes, we were found by the Governor General, but we're not part of the Grigori. For years now, the leaders of the three factions work hard to maintain the ceasefire and maybe make it into fully fledged peace. Long story short, our family can be called their project to eventually show higher ranks that different races can live together, because everyone in our family is of a different part of the supernatural world. Azazel is the main supporter of this idea and as someone who was known for focusing more on his research than the war, was chosen as our supervisor. Until now, only the leaders and a small selected group that is working on this project know all details, but as we are now part of your peerage and Kaichu is also responsible for this territory you should know it too. Issei would pray for them to understand, if not for his new condition. And so, he only held his breath when Rias and Sona exchanged a silent conversation via eye contact. After a moment, both of them dispelled their magic and the relived teen released the air from his lungs. Kiba, let him go. The redhead commanded calmly to her knight. The blonde boy immediately followed her order and dispersed his swords. Thank you. Damn, you're fast. We have to spar sometime soon. Septimus thanked with a slight bow and then massaged his throat. When everyone relaxed their stances, except the still out cold Kaneko and Akino, Issei fully focused on those two. What happened to them? Why did they react like that when Sep said their type of species? He asked, still not understanding how all of this could take such turn. The Rius walked to her rook and queen. After confirming that they were unharmed, she turned towards her new pawn. Both of them have deep traumas regarding their origins, they hate what they are. Actually, with your explanation I can understand how you recognized Akino, but how did you know what Kaneko is? Septimus just shrugged and wiggled. His tails. As I said, I'm a Nekomata. My senses are higher than others and while hiding behind her, I noticed that she smelled like cat. Although it was rather faint, she must be really suppressing that side. But doing it's dangerous for her health you know. He ended with a slightly worried tone. Hiding behind her. Long story. Luckily for him. Sona thought about something in Teen's story. You said that you could hear Issei's grandfathers, but if this is true, then both heavenly dragons have a telepathic connection to you too. Yes, and both of them are here right now. It can be a serious pain when they start their verbal battles in either of our heads, so in those situations, they mostly split their main attention between us, or one goes back to his host. It's like having annoying flies, but with the temper and size of dragons next to your ears that want to tear each other apart. Explained Issei with a grimace, thinking about the last time that happened and the migraine that followed. When you're inside a mind that thinks only about boobs and sex, there's not much more to do. Besides, our arguments aren't as bad as you say. The irate voice of the red dragon emperor came from the boy's chest. Was that, Sona asked, astonished, Deidre, and my name is Albion. Greetings, young devils. If you think that this is weird, then at first they were using our mouths. Let me just say, it was creepy. Joked Septimus as he tried to lighten the mood. MHH. The soft groan got everyone's attention. Both Akino and Kaneko were slowly regaining consciousness. Before they could freak out again, Rias was there, explaining that they were safe and both teens weren't going to hurt them. If nothing else, we've got ourselves a caring master. Looks like the rumors are true, the Grimori house really care for their servants. Noted the black and white yukai with content. As their king repeated what was said, she looked at them with curiosity. Just how powerful are you guys? And what are your abilities? 
Hmm, we're definitely more powerful than you combined but not super off. And our abilities. Oh, it's easy. Issei has better senses, higher stamina and durability, resistance to fire and poison, access to Tuki and partial dragonification. When he finally reaches maturity, he'll be able to change his form into full a dragon and use his inherited abilities. I, on the other hand, specialize Senjutsu, Yujutsu, all sorts of magic and manipulate time and space, though the last is only to some extent. There's some more to that, but in short, I'm brain, he's brawn. Casually explained the male Nekomata. Sona, still not entirely convinced, wanted one thing straight. If the governor general was really responsible for you and Septimus San, then why were you both killed by the fallen? It's Sep, please, because they were fallen angels, and just like you devils, the Gregory are also divided and not everyone is satisfied with the current leader, namely Azazel. We tried to contact him, but unfortunately, he's out of reach and it'd be best if we consult him before doing anything. And how long will it take? I'm not exactly thrilled to have a rouge group of fallen angels in my territory. Inquired the student council president. In three days we should know everything. We would move right now, but a few years back, someone acted without thinking and blew up some very important operation. The half-dragon responded in a certain, someone, with white bangs tried to look as innocent as he could while whistling. All right, we can wait for that much. Our classes will start soon, so let me formally welcome you to my peerage and tell you about your future duties. With that Rhea started with explanations about the evil peace system, devil hierarchy and what was expected of her new servants. After another few minutes, everyone stood up. Sona and her queen immediately bid their goodbyes, while the occult research club stayed for last words with their president. All right my adorable servants, now go do your daily routine. Eyes, Sep, as you were just resurrected you will be weakened for a few days, so you don't have to work today, but tomorrow you'll be starting with your contracts. Hi, Rias Nisan, cheered Issei. Oni-san sounds nice, but from now call me Bucho. She told them, Hi, Bucho, and I'm really sorry for scaring you, Kaneko-chan, Akino-senpei. Issei apologized with a formal bow and left. I'll stick with Senpei if that's not a problem. Septimus stopped with his hand over the handle. Oh, before I forget. On weekends I'm out of town, doing some important job that I can't quit now. If there will be an emergency of some kind, just call and I'll teleport right to you. That won't be a problem, right? Rias tilted her head lightly. As long as you do contracts there shouldn't be. But what kind of job is it? Some old obligation. Thanks, Senpei. Also, I'm sorry. Teen scratched his neck awkwardly and followed his brother. Outside he watched with a laugh as Issei's friends attacked him and questioned why he was in the old school building. As he walked to his classroom he put headphones on and played some music. When he heard the particular song he couldn't help but smirk and hum to himself. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. For me tilde tilde tilde. And I'm feely tilde tilde ingu tilde d. I'm feeling so tilde tilde good. DXD. Quite an eventful day, don't you think? Our parents are probably back home. Uh, I really don't want to explain all of this today. This day was way too long. Both brothers strolled down the road the one with black hair and white bangs talking. You really are fortunate that your new master is Grimori. They are exceptionally close with their servants. I like her. She appears to be good king and has a high potential. Both of them heard the dragons talking in their minds with mirth in their voices. Yeah, I like her too. Issei's face turned dreamy, as he recalled two big attributes of his new master. With teats big enough to suffocate someone I'd be surprised if you had any different reaction. And Diedrig probably likes her only because of her red hair, retorted Septimus. But I can't complain, she really seems to care for her peerage. Besides, she gave me those free weekends, so that's a big plus for her. But is it only me, or she is a weeaboo? His last comment made Issei's mind project image of Rias in a magical girl outfit on his bed, just about to shaking his head he replied, trying to hold his smile. Don't know, but otaku calling others weeaboo is kinda. I'm not an otaku, I like anime, manga, and cosplay, but that doesn't automatically make me one. The black-haired teen immediately interrupted causing his companions to laugh all the way back home. In front of their house, 
Both dragons quickly evacuated from both the teen's minds. It's time for me to go back to Valley. Hope you'll survive explaining what happened to your parents. And I have to see how my host is doing. Good luck, hatchlings. Realizing what was waiting for them behind the doors Issei and Septimus visibly paled. Come back here, you oversized alligators with wings. You had your fun, but now when you could be useful, you just fuck it and bail. Then former desperately tried to reason with them into helping. Oh, they're gone. Fuck you, rotten assholes. Fake laughing, his brother tried to stop shaking and slowly walked to the doors. Come on, let's get this over with. It's not like they would be a big help anyway. Bracing themselves, both the young dragon and Nekomata entered their house, fearing what was going to happen. Leaving their shoes outside, they cautiously headed towards the kitchen, wanting to end this as fast as possible. Halfway there they heard people laughing and suddenly something clicked in Septimus' mind. I knew something's not right. Issei. Run. They brought back. He frantically yelled through their connection at the same time releasing his ears and tails to use Senjutsu to teleport away. Oni-chan. His efforts were futile. Suddenly, a white bullet bumped into him with a loud war cry. Thud. O-W-W-W. Septimus groaned in pain opening slowly his eyes. Feeling the all-too-familiar weight on his back, he frantically started to wrench himself out of the bone-crushing hug, but his attacker was strong enough to keep him in place. No. Everything except for this. Issei. Save me. He cried helplessly to his brother. Issei. Knowing just how this new person was dangerous stood in place, hoping she wouldn't pick him as her next target. Oni-chan. That's mean. How could you say something like about your cute little sister, like she was some kind of monster? Especially after she hadn't seen you in such a long time. The bullet spoke raising herself a little, revealing that she was in fact a girl around their age, with unruly snowy hair reaching to the middle of her back, covering her innocent looking face and moderate chest. The girl was wearing a loose white shirt and blue shorts, giving her a somewhat scruffy appearance. Izu, get off me. Someone take her away. Wait, what are you? No, stay away from my ears. Help. Septimus' moves became more desperate as sensed girl's hand moving toward his head. His pleas fell on deaf ears, as the girl without a care scratched his cat ears, pun intended. Feeling his strength leaving him, Septimus resigned himself to his humiliating fate and unwillingly he let out a faint purr at the treatment. Izuna, let go of your brother. The stoic voice stopped the albino in her tracks. Hopping a little on the now purring guy, she tilted her head a little to its source, revealing her mismatched eyes, left being red and her right was silver. Mo, let me play with Sep Nietzsche a little more. Please. Izuna pouted and made puppy eyes. No, get off of him. The girl entered the corridor with an impassive expression, but her emerald eyes hid a smile as if this situation was something she missed much. Not that she would ever admit it. The girl was tall, same height as Septimus, with well-endowed figure and short blonde hair that reached her shoulders with pink ends, wearing casual green blouse and jeans. Welcome home Sep. Eyes. All right. Nay Chan. Reluctantly she released her brother jumping on her legs, leaving the poor black-haired boy with a destroyed pride on the floor. When she finally noticed Issei, her mood did a 180-degree turn and with sparkling eyes jumped at him. Oni Chan. Izuna's new target stumbled back, terrified that he was next in line for his sister's greeting. The energetic girl was stopped mid-air by the older blonde. Without a word Issei's savior grabbed the albino by the collar, fully expecting this. With a relieved sigh Issei waved to both of them, keeping a safe distance just for sure. Hello Izuna, Elaine. Getting himself from the floor and fixing his clothes Septimus coughed, trying to gather pieces of his dignity. Yeah, hi Ella, have I ever told you that you're my favorite older sister? I'm your only older sister. She just shook her head at her sibling's antics and strengthened her hold on the wriggling girl. Let me go, let me show my Oni-chan how much I missed him. Izuna cried and doubled her efforts earning a tired sigh from her sister, fearful look from Issei and vengeful smile from Septimus. Can you tone down? And boys, since, you're finally here, please help your sisters take their boxes to the rooms. Their mother's voice rang from the kitchen, stopping the lively girl and making her adopt an apologetic look. Sorry, Okaa-san. They apologized in perfect synchronization. As Izuna calmed down, 
Elaine released her sister, who landed with a soft yelp. Mimi, she hummed irritated, giving the older girl an angry face. But when Issei patted her head it was quickly replaced with an innocent smile and happy purring. She looked at Septimus with half-lidded eyes, who was caressing his ears lightly after the rough treatment. He got her silent plea to pet her too but he walked away with his tail swishing back and forth. The group moved to the kitchen, where their parents and last sister sat. Hello Okaa-san, Otu-san. Hi Marana. Both teens greeted everyone. Marana sat there eating. She smiled and waved back to both boys. She was a beautiful girl with warm gray eyes, long auburn hair and a calm smile. Her attire consisted of black sister outfit hugging her impressive figure and a cross hanging around her neck. Seeing the cross made the newly reincarnated devils wince in slight pain, which caught the attention of others in the room. The two brothers looked at each other. Both knew that they couldn't avoid it and taking deep breath Issei prepared himself for a long talk. Let's sit, it will take some time to explain everything. DXD. After an hour of recalling past events, except for a few, like a certain princess in someone's bed or them almost starting a fight with the same princess. The whole family sat quietly in the living room. Everyone was mulling over the news and what it meant for their future. The first one to break the silence was Mrs. Hyodo. If I understand correctly, your new girlfriend turned out to be Fallen Angel, that was sent here to kill you. Then when Septimus came there to save you, Rainer showed up and stabbed him, allowing them to escape and the devil reincarnating you. Then the devil showed up here in the morning, informed you that you're devils, you meet her peerage, she introduced you to them and you revealed who you were and told them about rest of family. More or less, except that Kalachurner is more like his ex-girlfriend now and we just told them that everyone here is part of Supernatural without any details. Specified Septimus, still little moody after the rough welcome. Seeing as Issei winced at his joke about his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, he immediately regretted it. Sorry. And you're telling me that Azazel, that is supposed to prevent that situations from happening, especially if they're caused by his people, is currently with Norse Pantheon. On some important meeting, her tone stayed the same, but everyone knew well where it was going. Why yes, what if they tell someone, even accidentally, about what we're doing here? We still need the appropriate situation to come out to light, the project alone won't be enough to convince others to make peace. Mr. Kyoto stated the issue that weighed on his mind. I don't think we have to worry about that. Sisters of the Mao are smart and they'll talk before anything to their older siblings. Today, Lucifer Sama and Leviathan Sama will have some family time, but it's safe to say that our daily life is safe. The dragon hybrid assured his father. And as much as I don't like this because of the whole dying thing, being part of Eris Peerage will be useful in convincing those geezers from the 72 pillars to our plan. Added Septimus trying to sweeten the deal and avoid angering their mother. All right, she stood up and looked at her husband. Guro, we're going to pay a visit to the Norse gods. And for Azazel's sake, they better really have an important meeting or the. Grigori will need a new leader for endangering my children. After that, she started collecting things needed for their travel. Guro, clearly expecting this behavior, calmly finished his coffee and smiled at his wife. Yes, dear, remember to take all components to travel to Asgard, we don't want to repeat what happened the last time we were there. He then turned to the younger part of their family. You know what to do when we're gone. Don't do anything stupid, rash and don't blow anything up. We'll be in two days at most, so wait for us and hope that the meeting is serious. After their father left to help with preparations, the group of teens exchanged worried looks, fully knowing the extent of the potential danger that Azazel was in. I don't know who has it worse. Uncle Zaz now that Okaa-san is after him, Ray chan since she is mind-controlled, Sep Nichen and Eyes Nichen because they died yesterday. Or me, since Sep Nichen doesn't want to feed me. Izuna said straight out of the blue, doing her best to make the black-haired Yukai feed her with a cute face. I'm not doing this, so leave me alone. He immediately cut her, ignoring her whimpers. Right then they've heard the sound of teleportation, meaning that their parents left. Both males visibly relaxed at that sound, sinking more into their seats. All right, it could definitely be worse. Actually, nothing happened to us, so I'd say she took the news remarkably well. The brown-haired teen turned to his brother. Nothing happened to us, but I'm curious if Azazel will be as fortunate. 
But hey, as long as it's not me that's on another end of Ka San's ire, I'm happy. I know what we need to do. Let's throw a party to celebrate our reunion. Suddenly shouted the white-haired girl just a few seconds after that. No, but the rest of household instantly shot down her idea. You're no fun. But when Oni-chan comes back and our family is again complete we're doing one. No discussion. After that, she got back to staring at Septimus. Issei, could you help me with last few boxes? Elaine asked her sibling casually. Of course. The brown-haired boy instantly agreed, eager to help his sister. After 15 minutes of moving things to girls' rooms, Issei came back to living room to watch some TV, but as he was about to enter he saw Marana giggling and Septimus feeding the beaming Izuna who was seated on his lap and played with his tail. Not a word, Septimus growled to his brother in low voice through their connection. DXD. The next day, both teens were on their way to the school, only two of them because their sisters had to wait for some paperwork to be done before they could go back to school. Eyes, go on by yourself, I have to stop by a shop and buy that box of sweets for my new shield. Or better make it too for that scare we gave her. And something for Akino Senpei. But for those, you're paying too. Black haired teen suggested. Good idea, we still have some time, so that won't be a problem. See ya, Issei fully agreed to the idea. After seeing Septimus strolling the other way, he changed his mind about going straight to the school and decided to relax a little in the nearby park. While he was sitting on a bench, thinking about every crazy thing that happened to him just yesterday, an abrupt sound brought him back to reality. Thud, owie. His eyes were introduced to pearly white panties with green stripes that were on a nun. Chapter 3 Kaneko watched those weird brothers with her usual expressionless expression while munching on sweets. One was her senior, Issei, widely known at school as a perverted beast. She noticed that during the whole show, he shifted his gaze between herself, Rias and Akino. Standing right beside him, was Septimus, the boy with unusual hair who, transferred recently and was the topic of many gossips. From what she's seen so far, he was skilled in magic and most likely as perverted as his brother. And me, Hyodo Septimus, something just as rare. A male Nekomata, Nekosho. Hearing his words, she stopped with another candy midair. He's a Nekosho too, his black tail and ear reminded her of her sister and her betrayal, and how Kaneko was almost executed. A flood of unwanted memories made short girl panic. Oni-sama, why, well, looking at you it's actually not that great a feat when we have here another Nekomata and a fallen angel hybrid, daughter of the Kadri member nonetheless. For a second, the world around her stopped. The white-haired girl couldn't form any thought, the words echoing deep inside her mind. Unconsciously dropping her candy, she stared with a look of pure terror at both Hyodos, unable to move. Crack, sitting next to her, Akino dropped her cup, looking like she was about to panic herself. The sharp sound of broken vessel pierced their ears, hardly waking youngest girl. No, her loud scream echoed inside the room, while she tightly hugged her petrified neighbor, trying to hide and shut herself out from everyone. Okay, that's not something that I've expected. Do you know what's going on here? Septimus clearly didn't know what was happening and how his words could cause such a reaction. Both dragon spirits stayed silent, as they understood the situation even less than him. No idea, but it looks serious, I think that accidentally you said something you really shouldn't. Answered Issei while folding his wings. Anyo. It was all that Septimus managed to say. After his declaration and offhandedly dropped comment, the rest of the room sat stunned. Rias was the first one that came back to her senses. Seeing Septimus moving in their direction, the devil princess quickly acted. Yudo. Her sharp command immediately brought the knight back. Faster than the human eye could register, he shot from his position, conjuring two demonic swords and directing them to the black-haired teen's throat. Halting with his foot in the air Yukai focused his eyes on the two black pieces of steel pointing at him. It's getting worse with every second. What have I done to make them try to kill me? He screamed internally. I have no idea, but you two can most likely take them. They have potential, but are young and untrained. Diedrag answered seriously, and set a new world record in becoming strays. No thank you, and do I have to remind you that a few hours ago we actually died. So let's avoid making it 2 times 24 hours and don't do anything stupid. 
Issei tried to calm them down and stop it from escalating further. Can someone please tell me why I suddenly have two swords at my throat? Septimus asked with his ears down, keeping his calm and watching out to not cut himself by the blades. Kiba stayed silent, waiting for the next order. Meanwhile, Rias, Sona, and Subaki stood up, their hands holding balls of demonic energy, ready to throw at any hostile movement. This is what happens when you suddenly claim that you're mad from power, next to the grandson of two beings that could kill gods and scare my peerage into a coma. The cold voice of the Grimori heiress cut through the tension. I'm not psychotic because of power. And while we can't argue about Issei being the grandson of both heavenly dragons, no one tried to scare your servants. He shot back, making Kiba move his swords closer. Whoa, easy there, blondie, I'm calm. I'm calm. Devils have a bad history with Senjutsu users that killed their masters while drunk on power, so let me be a judge here. Now, explain your story and how you knew who Akino and Kaneko Chan are. Now, Rias still aimed her power of destruction at them and watched for any signs of lies. Drunk on power, what, without stories and sidetracking, make it no more than 50 words. Sona stopped him before could say any more. Quote dot dot dot, what, Septimus repeated, 49 now, stated Citri without even blinking. You better tell them, before they attack us because of how annoying you are. Even with literal swords pointing at you, you can't stop yourself from being dramatic. Said tired Issei, keeping an eye on everyone in the room. Thinking for a minute and counting on his fingers, the male Nekomata did exactly as he was told to. Guy in the story is Azazel, we spent part of our childhood in Grigori, so we know Barakiel, he talked sometimes about his daughter. Don't jump the gun, we're not in this whole war and your siblings know about us in the city. And I smelled cat on Kaneko-chan. Done, he declared in one breath maintaining eye contact with the swordsman. Rhea's tolerance for confusion reached its limit with the last revelations. Now she only listened with a straight face as the teen declared that he was in a fairly close relationship with the fallen angels and their leader, with his brother facepalming loudly. Care to elaborate, before we kill you for being fallen angel agents. Before situation got out of control Issei stepped between them. Change of plan, shut the fuck up. Issei quickly silenced his brother before he made the situation even worse. Rias Senpei, it's not what it sounds like. Yes, we were found by the Governor General, but we're not part of the Grigori. For years now, the leaders of the three factions work hard to maintain the ceasefire and maybe make it into fully-fledged peace. Long story short, our family can be called their project to eventually show higher ranks that different races can live together because everyone in our family is of a different part of the supernatural world. Azazel is the main supporter of this idea and as someone who was known for focusing more on his research than the war, was chosen as our supervisor. Until now, only the leaders and a small selected group that is working on this project know all details, but as we are now part of your peerage and Kaichu is also responsible for this territory you should know it too. Issei would pray for them to understand, if not for his new condition. And so, he only held his breath when Rias and Sona exchanged a silent conversation via eye contact. After a moment, both of them dispelled their magic and the relived teen released the air from his lungs. Kiba, let him go. The redhead commanded calmly to her knight. The blonde boy immediately followed her order and dispersed his swords. Thank you. Damn, you're fast. We have to spar sometime soon. Septimus thanked with a slight bow and then massaged his throat. When everyone relaxed their stances, except the still out cold Kaneko and Akino, Issei fully focused on those two. What happened to them? Why did they react like that when Sep said their type of species? He asked, still not understanding how all of this could take such turn. The Rias walked to her rook and queen. After confirming that they were unharmed, she turned towards her new pawn. Both of them have deep traumas regarding their origins, they hate what they are. Actually, with your explanation I can understand how you recognized Akina, but how did you know what Kaneko is? Septimus just shrugged and wiggled his tails. As I said, I'm a Nekomata. My senses are higher than others and while hiding behind her, I noticed that she smelled like cat. Although it was rather faint, she must be really suppressing that side. But doing it's dangerous for her health you know. He ended with a slightly worried tone. Hiding behind her. Long story. Luckily for him. 
Sona thought about something in Teen's story. You said that you could hear Issei's grandfathers, but if this is true, then both heavenly dragons have a telepathic connection to you too. Yes, and both of them are here right now. It can be a serious pain when they start their verbal battles in either of our heads, so in those situations, they mostly split their main attention between us, or one goes back to his host. It's like having annoying flies, but with the temper and size of dragons next to your ears that want to tear each other apart. Explained Issei with a grimace, thinking about the last time that happened and the migraine that followed. When you're inside a mind that thinks only about boobs and sex, there's not much more to do. Besides, our arguments aren't as bad as you say. The irate voice of the Red Dragon Emperor came from the boy's chest. Was that? Sona asked, astonished. Deidre, and my name is Albion. Greetings, young devils. If you think that this is weird, then at first they were using our mouths. Let me just say, it was creepy. Joked Septimus as he tried to lighten the mood. MHH. The soft groan got everyone's attention. Both Akino and Kaneko were slowly regaining consciousness. Before they could freak out again, Rias was there, explaining that they were safe and both teens weren't going to hurt them. If nothing else, we've got ourselves a caring master. Looks like the rumors are true, the Grimori house really care for their servants. Noted the black and white yukai with content. As their king repeated what was said, she looked at them with curiosity. Just how powerful are you guys? And what are your abilities? Hmm, we're definitely more powerful than you combined but not super op. And our abilities? Oh, it's easy. Issei has better senses, higher stamina and durability, resistance to fire and poison, access to Tuki and partial dragonification. When he finally reaches maturity, he'll be able to change his form into full a dragon and use his inherited abilities. I, on the other hand, specialize Senjutsu, Yujutsu, all sorts of magic and manipulate time and space, though the last is only to some extent. There's some more to that, but in short, I'm brain, he's brawn. Casually explained the male Nekomata. Sona, still not entirely convinced, wanted one thing straight. If the governor general was really responsible for you and Septimus San, then why were you both killed by the fallen? It's Sep, please, because they were fallen angels, and just like you devils, the Gregory are also divided and not everyone is satisfied with the current leader, namely Azazel. We tried to contact him, but unfortunately, he's out of reach and it'd be best if we consult him before doing anything. And how long will it take? I'm not exactly thrilled to have a rouge group of fallen angels in my territory. Inquired the student council president. In three days we should know everything. We would move right now, but a few years back, Someone acted without thinking and blew up some very important operation. The half-dragon responded in a certain, someone, with white bangs tried to look as innocent as he could while whistling. All right, we can wait for that much. Our classes will start soon, so let me formally welcome you to my peerage and tell you about your future duties. With that Rhea started with explanations about the evil peace system, devil hierarchy and what was expected of her new servants. After another few minutes, everyone stood up. Sona and her queen immediately bid their goodbyes, while the occult research club stayed for last words with their president. All right my adorable servants, now go do your daily routine. Eyes, Sep, as you were just resurrected you will be weakened for a few days, see you. Don't have to work today, but tomorrow you'll be starting with your contracts. Hi, Rias Nisan, cheered Issei. Oni-san sounds nice, but from now call me Bucho. She told them. Hi, Bucho, and I'm really sorry for scaring you, Kaneko-chan, Akino-senpei. Issei apologized with a formal bow and left. I'll stick with Senpei if that's not a problem. Septimus stopped with his hand over the handle. Oh, before I forget. On weekends I'm out of town, doing some important job that I can't quit now. If there will be an emergency of some kind, just call and I'll teleport right to you. That won't be a problem, right? Rias tilted her head lightly. As long as you do contracts there shouldn't be. But what kind of job is it? Some old obligation. Thanks, Senpei. Also, I'm sorry. Teen scratched his neck awkwardly and followed his brother. Outside he watched with a laugh as Issei's friends attacked him and questioned why he was in the old school building. As he walked to his classroom he put headphones on and played some music. 
When he heard the particular song he couldn't help but smirk and hum to himself. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. For me tilde tilde tilde. And I'm feely tilde tilde ingu tilde d. I'm feeling so tilde tilde good. DXD. Quite an eventful day, don't you think? Our parents are probably back home. Ah. Uh, I really don't want to explain all of this today. This day was way too long. Both brothers strolled down the road, the one with black hair and white bangs talking. You really are fortunate that your new master is Ramori. They are exceptionally close with their servants. I like her. She appears to be good king and has a high potential. Both of them heard the dragons talking in their minds with mirth in their voices. Yeah, I like her too. Issei's face turned dreamy, as he recalled two big attributes of his new master. With teats big enough to suffocate someone I'd be surprised if you had any different reaction. And Diedreg probably likes her only because of her red hair, retorted Septimus. But I can't complain, she really seems to care for her peerage. Besides, she gave me those free weekends, so that's a big plus for her. But is it only me, or she is a weeaboo? His last comment made Issei's mind project image of Rias in a magical girl outfit on his bed, just about to shaking his head he replied, trying to hold his smile. Don't know, but otaku calling others weeaboo is kinda. I'm not an otaku, I like anime, manga, and cosplay, but that doesn't automatically make me one. The black-haired teen immediately interrupted causing his companions to laugh all the way back home. In front of their house, both dragons quickly evacuated from both the teens' minds. It's time for me to go back to Valley. Hope you'll survive explaining what happened to your parents. And I have to see how my host is doing. Good luck, hatchlings. Realizing what was waiting for them behind the doors Issei and Septimus visibly paled. Come back here, you oversized alligators with wings. You had your fun, but now when you could be useful, you just fuck it and bail. Then former desperately tried to reason with them into helping. Oh, they're gone. Fuck you, rotten assholes. Fake laughing, his brother tried to stop shaking and slowly walked to the doors. Come on, let's get this over with. It's not like they would be a big help anyway. Bracing themselves, both the young dragon and Nekomata entered their house, fearing what was going to happen. Leaving their shoes outside, they cautiously headed towards the kitchen, wanting to end this as fast as possible. Halfway there they heard people laughing and suddenly something clicked in Septimus' mind. I knew something's not right. Issei. Run. They brought back. He frantically yelled through there. Connection at the same time releasing his ears and tails to use Senjutsu to teleport away. Oni-chan. His efforts were futile. Suddenly, a white bullet bumped into him with a loud war cry. Thud. O-W-W-W. Septimus groaned in pain opening slowly his eyes. Feeling the all too familiar weight on his back, he frantically started to wrench himself out of the bone crushing hug, but his attacker was strong enough to keep him in place. No. Everything except for this. Issei. Save me. He cried helplessly to his brother. Issei. Knowing just how this new person was dangerous stood in place, hoping she wouldn't pick him as her next target. Oni-chan. That's mean. How could you say something like about your cute little sister, like she was some kind of monster? Especially after she hadn't seen you in such a long time. The bullet spoke raising herself a little, revealing that she was in fact, a girl around their age, with unruly snowy hair reaching to the middle of her back, covering her innocent looking face and moderate chest. The girl was wearing a loose white shirt and blue shorts, giving her a somewhat scruffy appearance. Izu. Get off me. Someone take her away. Wait. What are you? No. Stay away from my ears. Help. Septimus moves became more desperate as sensed girl's hand moving toward his head. His pleas fell on deaf ears, as the girl without a care scratched his cat ears, pun intended. Feeling his strength leaving him, Septimus resigned himself to his humiliating fate and unwillingly he let out a faint purr at the treatment. Izuna. Let go of your brother. The stoic voice stopped the albino in her tracks. Hopping a little on the now purring guy, she tilted her head a little to its source, revealing her mismatched eyes, left being red and her right was silver. Mo, let me play with Sep Nietzschean a little more. Please. Izuna pouted and made puppy eyes. No, get off of him. The girl entered the corridor with an impassive expression, but her emerald eyes hid a smile as if this situation was something she missed much. 
Not that she would ever admit it. The girl was tall, same height as Septimus, with well-endowed figure and short blonde hair that reached her shoulders with pink ends, wearing casual green blouse and jeans. Welcome home Sep, eyes. All right, Nay Chan, reluctantly she released her brother jumping on her legs, leaving the poor black-haired boy with a destroyed pride on the floor. When she finally noticed Issei, her mood did a 180-degree turn and with sparkling eyes jumped at him. Oni-chan, Izuna's new target stumbled back, terrified that he was next in line for his sister's greeting. The energetic girl was stopped mid-air by the older blonde. Without a word Issei's savior grabbed the albino by the collar, fully expecting this. With a relieved sigh Issei waved to both of them, keeping a safe distance just for sure. Hello Izuna, Elaine. Getting himself from the floor and fixing his clothes Septimus coughed, trying to gather pieces of his dignity. Yeah, hi Ella, have I ever told you that you're my favorite older sister? I'm your only older sister. She just shook her head at her sibling's antics and strengthened her hold on the wriggling girl. Let me go, let me show my Oni-chan how much I missed him. Izuna cried and doubled her efforts earning a tired sigh from her sister, fearful look from Issei and vengeful smile from Septimus. Can you tone down? And boys, since you're finally here, please help your sisters take their boxes to the rooms. Their mother's voice rang from the kitchen, stopping the lively girl and making her adopt an apologetic look. Sorry, Okaa-san. They apologized in perfect synchronization. As Izuna calmed down, Elaine released her sister, who landed with a soft yelp. Mini, she hummed, irritated, giving the older girl an angry face. But when Issei patted her head it was quickly replaced with an innocent smile and happy purring. She looked at Septimus with half-lidded eyes, who was caressing his ears lightly after the rough treatment. He got her silent plea to pet her too but he walked away with his tail swishing back and forth. The group moved to the kitchen, where their parents and last sister sat. Hello Okaa-san, Otu-san. Hi Marana. Both teens greeted everyone. Marana sat there eating. She smiled and waved back to both boys. She was a beautiful girl with warm gray eyes, long auburn hair and a calm smile. Her attire consisted of black sister outfit hugging her impressive figure and a cross hanging around her neck. Seeing the cross made the newly reincarnated devils wince in slight pain, which caught the attention of others in the room. The two brothers looked at each other. Both knew that they couldn't avoid it and taking deep breath Issei prepared himself for a long talk. Let's sit. It will take some time to explain everything. DXD. After an hour of recalling past events, except for a few, like a certain princess in someone's bed or them almost starting a fight with the same princess. The whole family sat quietly in the living room. Everyone was mulling over the news and what it meant for their future. The first one to break the silence was Mrs. Hiodo. If I understand correctly, your new girlfriend turned out to be Fallen Angel, that was sent here to kill you. Then when Septimus came there to save you, Rainer showed up and stabbed him, allowing them to escape and the devil reincarnating you. Then the devil showed up here in the morning, informed you that you're devils, you meet her peerage, she introduced you to them and you revealed who you were and told them about rest of family. More or less, except that Kalachurner is more like his ex-girlfriend now and we just told them that everyone here is part of Supernatural without any details. Specified Septimus, still a little moody after the rough welcome. Seeing as Issei winced at his joke about his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, he immediately regretted it. Sorry, and you're telling me that Azazel, that is supposed to prevent that situations from happening, especially if they're caused by his people, is currently with Norse Pantheon. On some important meeting, her tone stayed the same, but everyone knew well where it was going. Why yes, what if they tell someone, even accidentally, about what we're doing here? We still need the appropriate situation to come out to light, the project alone won't be enough to convince others to make peace. Mr. Hiodo stated the issue that weighed on his mind. I don't think we have to worry about that. Sisters of the Mao are smart and they'll talk before anything to their older siblings. Today, Lucifer Sama and Leviathan Sama will have some family time, but it's safe to say that our daily life is safe. The dragon hybrid assured his father. And as much as I don't like this because of the whole dying thing, being part of Eris Peerage will be useful in convincing those geezers from the 72 pillars to our plan. Added Septimus trying to sweeten the deal and avoid angering their mother. Alright, she stood up and looked at her husband. Guro, 
we're going to pay a visit to the Norse gods. And for Azazel's sake, they better really have an important meeting or the Grigori will need a new leader for endangering my children. After that, she started collecting things needed for their travel. Guro, clearly expecting this behavior, calmly finished his coffee and smiled at his wife. Yes, dear, remember to take all components to travel to Asgard, we don't want to repeat what happened the last time we were there. He, then turned to the younger part of their family. You know what to do when we're gone. Don't do anything stupid, rash and don't blow anything up. We'll be in two days at most, so wait for us and hope that the meeting is serious. After their father left to help with preparations, the group of teens exchanged worried looks, fully knowing the extent of the potential danger that Azazel was in. I don't know who has it worse. Uncle Zaz now that Oka-san is after him, Ray chan since she is mind-controlled, Sep Nichen and Eyes Nichen because they died yesterday. Or me, since Sep Nichen doesn't want to feed me. Izuna said straight out of the blue, doing her best to make the black-haired Yukai feed her with a cute face. I'm not doing this, so leave me alone. He immediately cut her, ignoring her whimpers. Right then they've heard the sound of teleportation, meaning that their parents left. Both males visibly relaxed at that sound, sinking more into their seats. All right, it could definitely be worse. Actually, nothing happened to us, so I'd say she took the news remarkably well. The brown-haired teen turned to his brother. Nothing happened to us, but I'm curious if Azazel will be as fortunate. But hey, as long as it's not me that's on another end of Ka San's ire, I'm happy. I know what we need to do. Let's throw a party to celebrate our reunion. Suddenly shouted the white-haired girl just a few seconds after that. No, but the rest of household instantly shot down her idea. You're no fun. But when Oni-chan comes back and our family is again complete we're doing one. No discussion. After that, she got back to staring at Septimus. Issei, could you help me with last few boxes? Elaine asked her sibling casually. Of course. The brown-haired boy instantly agreed, eager to help his sister. After 15 minutes of moving things to girls' rooms, Issei came back to living room to watch some TV, but as he was about to enter he saw Marana giggling and Septimus feeding the beaming Izuna who was seated on his lap and played with his tail. Not a word, Septimus growled to his brother in low voice through their connection. DXD. The next day, both teens were on their way to the school, only two of them because their sisters had to wait for some paperwork to be done before they could go back to school. Eyes, go on by yourself, I have to stop by a shop and buy that box of sweets for my new shield. Or better make it too for that scare we gave her. And something for Akino Senpei. But for those, you're paying too. Black haired teen suggested. Good idea, we still have some time, so that won't be a problem. See ya, Issei fully agreed to the idea. After seeing Septimus strolling the other way, he changed his mind about going straight to the school and decided to relax a little in the nearby park. While he was sitting on a bench, thinking about every crazy thing that happened to him just yesterday, an abrupt sound brought him back to reality. Thud, owie. His eyes were introduced to pearly white panties with green stripes that were on a nun. Chapter 4, Green Stripes. Issei's eyes instinctively registered and burned inside his mind the image of the young nun's underwear. He shook his head and quickly helped the poor girl get up. Are you all right? He was genuinely concerned about her, that fall looked really painful. When the girl in the habit looked up and into his brown eyes, he immediately admitted that she was a real beauty. With long golden hair and fair skin, she easily fit into most straight men preferences, even if for Issei she could be a little bigger around the chest. Do you speak Italian? Her shy voice was full of hope that she finally found someone in this country who could understand her. You could say that, the brunette gave her a vague answer. Explaining the whole deal with him being a devil and can understand every spoken language would end up with too much of a trouble for such an early hour. The sad look in her eyes immediately made him want to hug her and protect her, but he restrained himself. Anyo, I've been appointed to the church here. But I don't know Japanese that well in. I got lost and now I don't know how to get there. Could you please help me? She asked timidly. There is one right outside of town, I can take you there. But it's been abandoned for years now. Are you sure that you're in the right town? 
The teenager asked, but slowly he started to have suspicions about the purpose of her presence here. Why yes, thank you, the Lord must have sent you here as an answer to my prayers. A smile graced her face, making her even cuter than before. Not a problem, my name is Issei Hiodo, but everyone calls me Eyes. Here, let me help you. The irony of her statement didn't escape the dragon hybrid as he smiled to the nun and took her traveling bag, ignoring the pain in his head. My name is Asia Argento. Thank you very much, Mr. Issei. Please, just eyes. Okay, Mr. Eyes. Why do I suddenly feel old? DXD. I've led her close to the church. I used the excuse that I needed to rush back to school. For sure the fallen angels made their base there, I could smell them from a distance. After lessons, Issei sat on one of the couches in the club with the rest of members, explaining his morning adventure with the nun. She showed him her sacred gear when she healed a young boy and when they talked about her past in the church. He admitted that one of his sisters was a sister too now that was redundant. It's really sad that she was excommunicated, especially for something as harmless as healing a devil but we can't help her now. Besides, the Grigori takes care of sacred gear users and ex-members of the church, so she should be taken good care of there. Said Rias while she ate some chocolates. And don't forget that we can't make our move just yet. It's too bad that now they will know that you're alive, and by extend me too, but with that, we can't do much more until Azazel gives the go signal. I really hate all of this, but it's better than listening later after we killed someone we shouldn't or something. Septimus added as two cents from his place, also eating some sweets from the box. After some thought, he bought boxes as an apology and a welcome gift to everyone, with additional for Kaneko as payment for protecting him from the sadistic queen if she got too close. That's the worry for another day. I wanted to give you your first job as a devil's today, but we got an order from the Archduke to exterminate a stray devil that showed up here so it will be a good occasion as to show you how we fight and vice versa. Ready yourselves, we'll be going in five minutes. Their king announced, happy inside to finally see what the new members of her family were capable of. She hoped that they would be her trump card to win her freedom. Of course, she loved all her servants, both old and new, but these two had something in them that made her senses twitch, in a good way. A few minutes later, almost everyone stood in the center of the room where a big magic circle was drawn, ready to teleport as Rias went over to the Hyodo bros. Give me your hands. When both of them complied she quickly wrote on each palm a small magic circle. There, now you can use my family's teleportation circles perform contracts and are officially recognized as part of the Grimori household. Now come, time for your first stray hunt. Actually, it's not our first stray hunt. We've got some of those before, am I right Sep? There were always some that caused trouble wherever we appeared. Issei spoke as he entered the circle. Yeah, you could say. But for once, I'm actually grateful for this, we will see how rusty you've become for these three years. Septimus followed him inside, stretching his arms and cracking his neck. The whole group was engulfed in a red light and after a few seconds, they appeared next to an abandoned warehouse with an obscure aura around it. As the night air hit them, the two Nekomatas and one dragon deeply inhaled and grimaced. Smell of blood, said Kaneko covering her nose. And sex, added Issei and did the same. Septimus stood there for a moment, sniffing around with closed eyes and clear disgust on his face. Four fresh distinctive scents, most likely two males and two females, the females feel like devils. With this cheap horror scenery, I don't even want to think what should happen here. Akino looked surprised. Two strays. Archduke told us only about one. This got her a neutral shrug from the black-haired team. I don't know, I'm just saying I what smell here. What I know, however, is to always follow the nose, so better be on your guard. Rias stood there, thinking about the unexpected turn of events and their next move. Alright, everyone, if there's a risk of it being an ambush, then we have to be careful. Eyes Kuhn, 
Sep Kun, if only one stray will appear, then you will look for the second and won't allow her to hurt any of us while we fight. If the second does come out, then you both engage it while we kill the other. She explained her plan to the group. Hi, Bucho. Hi, Senpei. They slowly opened the doors, the foul stench making everyone recoil. Looking for any sign of the stray devils, they slowly moved forward. Everyone felt a wicked presence in the building circling around them in the shadows without any sound. I smell something disgusting, but I also smell something delicious. I wonder, is it sour, or is it sweet? Stray Devil Visor, by the orders of the Archduke we're here to eliminate you for leaving your master's side and rampaging as you please. Rhea states to seemingly empty space. Behebehehe, an inhuman laugh echoed around them, followed shortly by loud steps. A naked, disfigured, female centaur came out of the shadows, wielding two spears that glowed with malice. The Grimori group tensed, looking for a weakness to exploit. You should really be careful walking around like that, letting your boobs hang around without a bra, or else you'll end up with ugly sags. And really, you couldn't make it more, grim and dark. I understand the need for mood and all, but it's not so painful to clean and remove the stench, you know. Except for the two Hyodos. Everyone looked at them dumbfounded, talking like it was some sort of social meeting, not a hunt for depraved monsters. Quote dot dot dot, pervert, said Kaneko, reluctantly comparing her developing breasts to that of the stray, her king and queen. Shaking off another weird antic of her pawn and bishop, Rias Grimori gave her servants orders. That's one, Eyes and Sep, stand by and search for the other, Yudo, go, hi. The blonde knight gripped his sword and launched towards the monster at insane speeds. For the untrained eye, it looked like he vanished, only to reappear with his sword striking at Visor's arms, only to be stopped mere inches by the giant spear. Immediately he vanished again, the second weapon impeded where his chest was a second before. The sword boy is fast, I give him that. His technique is not bad either but he still has much work before him if he wants to fight in the big league. Diedrag unexpectedly voiced his opinion in both teams, heads. Diedrag, what are you doing here? Asked Issei, following Yudo's movements as he ran around and hit the stray from different angles, every assault barely intercepted. Unconsciously, a lecherous grin spread on his face when every blocked strike made her breasts jiggle. At the same time, the knight didn't even spare them a second glance, focused only on her weapons. I was bored, my host is currently sleeping and her dreams are not that interesting, so I came to you to see what you are doing. The red dragon emperor admitted without any shame. Yeah, leaping over the swing of Visor's beastly leg, Yudo got under her guard and with clean swipe he cut both of her arms, making the horrific woman scream. He can do better or he has some kind of trick that in his arsenal. Also, it's an honor to be the entertainment of a great, legendary, lazy lizard that doesn't do anything useful. Septimus, whose eyes were jumping between the fight and scanning the room for the second stray, answered. Watch it, little cat. If only I had my body you would be mere seconds away from being eaten. But you don't have and with your host unable to communicate with you, the most you can do to me is be an annoying distraction. Considering that I had my share of dying for this week and I'd be happy to go without it for the next millennia or two, let me do my task and shut up. Issei had to snort at the situation, where the teenage Yukai scolded the spirit of a being that made gods tremble in fear without even batting an eye. Err, Visor, enraged with the loss of her arms turned around looking for her running opponent. Right then, a little figure attacked her blindside with a strength that made the monster grunt in pain. Whipping her head to her new attacker, the stray spotted Kaneko still holding fist after the hit. Die, midget, with an ear-piercing screech, the centaur-like woman rushed at the small girl, trying to squash the girl with her overwhelming mass. Quote dot 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 quote. Visor's words seemingly had no effect on the little rook. Yet when the enormous paw with claws tried to hit Kaneko, 
she met it with her own devastating punch. Her eyes cold enough to send a chill down her opponent's spine. Crunch. The moment they collided bones of monstrous legs snapped with a sickening sound. Arg. You little. Ugh. Whatever Stray tried to say was stopped when Kaneko jumped and following after first blow she punched the bigger woman in the stomach so hard that she was sent flying. She has a nice punch. Now, what if she used Tuki with it after some training, Naisep? Issei turned his eyes from one Nekomata to the other, to see him watching the white-haired girl with caution. Shadows formed around Septimus, hands to disappear seconds later and in their place was a katana and wakazashi in each hand. Quote dot dot dot, have to remember, never joke about Kaneko-chan's height. Breasts too most likely, not worth the trouble, muttered the yukai, got something on the second stray. Nothing much, I only felt little stir when that beast lost her arms. Me too, but at least we're sure she's here and watching us. Don't drop your guard, I could say the same to you. Bump. The stray fell back onto the ground, seemingly drained of energy. Era era. Someone's been naughty. Akino laughed while walking slowly to the fallen enemy. With magic, she changed her attire into Shrine Maiden and raised her hands. Nico. Both Hyodos cried happily at the sight. B Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z T. Ga A R R R R H. A giant lightning bolt hit Visor electrocuting her and sapping the rest of her strength to fight. And this someone needs punishment. Oh ho ho ho, you can take it, don't you? It will be my master who shall finish you off. Akino blushed while she licked her lips, as she visibly enjoyed her actions. I fucking told you, shouted terrified the Septimus, taking a step back and crossing swords in a defensive gesture, his previous eagerness for the raven-haired girl's new outfit gone. I was right, she's a sadist that gets off on this. Don't worry, she's only like that when she's fighting. Rias calmed her bishop and walked up to the pitiful pile of smoking remains and her queen. Akino, stop, all right, I'll give you this, now I'm scared of Akino san too. But doesn't she reminds you of someone who could change attitudes at the drop of a pen? Issei asked offhandedly, he paused, do you feel that? I'm not getting orgasms torturing my prey, I just kill them. And yes, I do feel that. She'll attack soon when she'll see a chance to kill even one of them. Be ready. His answer made the dragon hybrid gather his power, focusing it mostly on his arms and legs. Rhea stood over the half-dead monster and forwarded her hand like Naruto would use a Rasengan. Any last words? Visor barely raised her head and looked the scarlet-haired girl in the eye. Farewell, princess. Visor smirked. Killing intent spiked when Rias gathered her magical energy. There. Both Hyodos observing the room shouted mentally. Without hesitation, Issei burst from his place and with a speed rivaling that of Kiba, he appeared next to his master, catching something flying towards her. Rias looked in shock at her savior. Issei's entire features changed. Red or white scales were seen on his skin where the school uniform didn't cover, only stopping at the base of his neck. Dragon claws where his hands were supposed to be, the sharp nails digging into the projectile that dare harm his master. His eyes were that of a reptile, brown and slitted, while they shone dangerously in the darkness. His teeth were no longer human, for they were as sharp as shark teeth. Oh. You have good instincts, handsome. The projectile that Issei caught was, in fact, a tentacle with black veins that pulsed. The tentacle retracted back into the darkness, where came a slender young woman with purple hair and a blood-stained face. What attracted everyone's attention was that her eyeballs were completely black, with only the pupil being red, and on her back were six tentacles like the one that attacked Rias. I'm curious, what do you taste like? Great. Another man-eater. Like one cannibal is not enough. Sighed Septimus as he walking next to his brother. The shadows next to him formed a limb similar to that of their enemy and held onto the swords as he put up his headphones and played music. Let's see how much this three years softened you up. How about we play around bro? Standard rules. 
No offensive magic, no fire or poison breathing. Just skills, he said to the hybrid next to him and took back the swords. Adjusting his grip on the swords, Septimus switched into his Nekomata form. You want in too, what can an attractive girl like me do when there is so much demanded from her? She turned to the black and white haired boy and asked with an alluring voice, licking some of the blood around her mouth. Sounds good, let's play, Issei answered, giving his brother quick nod and turn to rest of the group. Leave her to, us, Bucho, without any other words or glance, both teens attacked the second stray in perfect synchronization, coming at her from opposite sides. The woman just laughed and blocked it with her tentacles. Both of you at once. I'll be sure to suck you dry. Of your blood. She pushed them back. Oi, lady, stop with the sexy comments, it's not fair with that kind of look. Issei jumped back, his mind distracting him with an interesting situation involving the devil in front of him, without his brother there. And you stop thinking with your dick, idiot. Yelled at him Septimus, blocking two tentacles, with one of them touching his skin. Arg, those shits are poisonous. He gasped and gained distance between himself and the enemy. Good thing that is the grandson of one of the most poisonous dragons this doesn't even sting. The brown-haired boy again tried to get past the stray's additional limbs and cut her down. Lucky bastard, looks like little more distance will be useful in this battle. The Yukai grunted under his breath. Then both swords in his hands disappeared in shadows and in their place was a long scythe of the same color. Twirling it in his hands he ran back into the fray and with wide swing, slashed one of the tentacles, cutting it clean off. Take that, bitch, nyahahaha, you little fuck, I'll rip you apart for that. She roared and shot two others at him which he swiftly dodged. Meanwhile, Issei got two of the tentacles in his claws and with them, he yanked the woman to himself. Shut up, he roared and sent her flying with a strong headbutt, tearing off the tentacles as she flew. Wait a moment, did you just say, NYA? Issei asked with disbelief as he dropped the dead limbs. No, Septimus answered quickly, you totally did, wait till Izuna hears about that. The dragon hybrid shouted through the connection with a loud laugh. Do that and I'll burn your porn collection. The red-eyed woman backed down a little, keeping her remaining tentacles between her and the two Hyodos. Seeing this, both males grinned like sharks that just smelled blood. Enough playing around, I'll hold her down, you go for the kill. Issei's telepathic voice was cold and calculated, as he flexed his dragonified hands. No fun can last forever. Let's finish this slut that takes the phrase, eating dicks, too literally. Septimus agreed. Septimus grinned, his eyes shining orange from under the white part of his hair when he twirled his weapon around and took a slow step towards the bloodied woman. The stray leveled her limbs at her cat-like enemy, thinking that he was going to attack. However, following the movements of his weapon, she didn't see for a moment what her second opponent was doing. The little loss of the concentration at his brother's action was all that Issei needed from his enemy. Using the strength of his dragonified legs, he jumped to her tentacles. Gripping two of them and using them like chains he crashed her into a fourth wall. He pulled her high into the air again then smashed her into the hard floor. With most of her ribs broken and two of her tentacles held by the boy turned monster, the stray weakly stood up and aimed her last free tentacle at his face. It was a desperate attack that should have guaranteed that at least one of them be brought down with her, but Issei violently turned his head right before her limb reached him and bit deeply into it, keeping her immovable. Now, at Issei's signal, Septimus moved faster than any other fighter today. Septimus ran diagonally his feet touching the air instead of the ground. Quickly gaining speed and height, he bounced off the same invisible surface that he was running on, diving towards the stray. His head bobbing to the rhythm of the song in his earphones, his scythe. Trailing behind him, Septimus gave a soundless yell as he beheaded the pinned woman, who could only watch her death approaching. Smash! You could be the corpse and I could be the killer. If I could be the devil, you could be the sinner. 
quite fit for the situation, don't you think? Septimus sang as he rose from his landing, hanging his weapon over his shoulder. Taking off his headphones he turned to rest of their peerage that watched the whole fight from a safe distance. As Second Stray's corpse was behind him, he couldn't see that the remaining tentacles were sucked back into the body that started swelling fast. Issei, on the other hand, noticed what was happening and quickly conjured magic circle to shield himself. Septimus, said Teen immediately turned toward his brother, his scythe in a defensive position ready to block any attack. Wah, boom, the swelled body exploded and astonished the male Nekomata. Said Nekomata could only manage to shield his face with arms before the mass of gore hit him. Not moving for few seconds, he stared at Issei, safe and clean behind his shield when he was from head to toe covered in blood. What, the, fucking shit, he yelled and looked at his clothes, taking a quick sniff. Ugh, unholy fuck, and here I thought that this room smelled bad. Rius and her group to their fortune were far enough to avoid the results of the disgusting explosion and stared speechlessly. They were impressed with the ease that the brothers defeated the stray devil, especially if they were holding back and were just about to praise them when unexpectedly, the said stray's body erupted. You're fortunate that you cut off half of those tentacles, or her blood would be just as toxic as they were. It is an old technique, potent in battle and useful to take an enemy down even when defeated. Diedreg spoke out, slightly startling the devils. And you haven't shared this with us before because, asked Issei as Septimus, perked up from checking his arm, that was burned from the previous contact with the poison. I recalled it only after she exploded. As I said, it's an old technique and it's been ages since the last time I saw it. The old dragon said apologetically, quote dot dot dot, I'm going to kill him. I'll find his host, kill her, then do the same with the next and repeat it until I find some way to destroy his sacred gear. Septimus spoke with a low voice as he started leaking malicious aura that seemed to draw nearby shadows. Regaining her composure, Rius gained everyone's attention. Good job, especially you, Kaneko-chan, eyes Kun and Sep Kun with detecting the second stray devil. You're free to go and see you tomorrow. Thank you, Bucho, see you tomorrow, said Issei and teleported back home with Septimus. As the light from their circle died down, Akino walked to her king. They're strong, insanely even, but do you think that they stand a chance against Riser? The crimson-haired devil turned to her friend with a sad smile. They have too. Those two are my last hope. DXD. Both Hyodos appeared before their house in a red flash, one of them with an expression of pure disgust and the second looking at him with pity. I need a long shower, like an hour or more. Then I'll burn those clothes or my nose will kill me. Septimus said as he opened doors. Sep Nichen, eyes Nichen, welcome home. Ella Nichan cooked her special today. Izuna ran towards them when they entered. With her hair curled and flying behind her, she was about to jump on her brother, but one look at Septimus stopped her in her tracks. Yek, Oni-chan, you stink. Don't come near me. As the girl slowly backed away from him, Septimus grinned widely seeing a perfect chance for a little payback. What's wrong, Izu-chan? Give your Oni-chan big hug. The teen with. Orange eyes imitated her voice as he opened his arms and took a step in her direction. No tilde tilde tilde, the younger girl screamed and ran away, her brother following right behind her, laughing like a villain from a cheesy anime series. Issei looked at the speeding duo as he walked inside. His legs and nose immediately guided him to the living room where Elaine and Marana were setting the table. Hey, Ella, Mira, we're back. The Russian nun raised her head and smiled warmly. It's hard to miss. Those two act together like cat and dog. She commented as they heard something crash. And here I thought that cheap jokes are Septimus, Domain. Said the blonde older sister to her sister who was in fact, a sister with a soft chuckle. She fixed her hair and turned to Issei. Dad called. It looks like mom won't hurt a zazzle. This meeting turned out to be serious and they will be back tomorrow evening. 
Great news. Issei said and looked hungrily at the food. Ea tilde 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 ah. Mawahaha ha ha ha. Right then, a high pitched scream of terror from a certain white haired girl spread throughout the household telling everyone that her brother had seized her, which was followed by a cheerful laugh from the living room. That's all for now until next time.